All right. Good morning, Baylife. How are you guys? Morning. Um, you can see that we had one person this past week at our campuses trust Christ for the first time, so you can cheer it up for that. Um, my name is Chris Groover. If you don't know that, uh, I am the high school pastor here at Baylife, and very, very excited. Thank you for the claps over there. Um, usually that's my mom, but I think that's actually Kiki today. So um, I, I am the high school pastor here um, at the church. Before that, I was the middle school pastor for a while, and um, it's, it's always a fun chance to come um, and hang out with adults every once in a while. Um, I love middle school kids. I love high school kids, but every once in a while, it's good to be with my people. And so you're my people, so um, thank you for being here. Thank you for um, allowing me the chance to come and to share God's word um, with you guys. Um, by the way, I didn't know, did you guys know that's a real rose? Okay. I thought they were fake, um, so I just wanted to point that out. Last night, I, uh, I was at Bay Life 60, and they have fake roses, and so I got thrown off, and so that, that just, you know, is interesting to me, so I, that's a real rose, in case you ever wondered about that. Um, we are in the middle of established series. We've uh, been in this for a few weeks now, and Mark's um, been sharing things like this idea of eternal salvation, the idea of the Holy Spirit, and, and different topics, and so we're continuing on on the established series today, and we're going to be looking at the Word of God. And specifically, what we're going to be looking at is the authority of the Scriptures and that the authority that the Scriptures should have in your life and in my life as well. Um, something that's true, I think, about a lot of us in here today is that a lot of us have grown up in church, right? Um, just maybe raise your hand. If you have grown up um, in church, maybe you went to church when you were in middle school or elementary school, right? A lot of us, okay. So, so a, a good majority of the room has been exposed to church probably at a young age. Maybe it was first in kids' church, maybe it was in middle school ministry, maybe you went to youth group growing up, um, but we've all, like a lot of us, the majority of us here have had some sort of church experience, and I'm no different. I, I grew up in the church. I like to say that I was born a Christian because my parents essentially from birth took me to church every Sunday, which of course I wasn't born a Christian, but that's just, um, I like to say that. And so I, I grew up in the church as well, and in fact, I grew up um, in Valrico, so not too far from here. Um, I'm a person, yeah, there you go, if you, from Valrico, scream it out, rep it out. Um, I grew up there, and uh, back in that day, Valrico was like orange groves and dirt roads, right? There's no mall in Brandon. We had to go to Lakeland for the mall. It was, it was tough. It was tough, man, tough times. And so I, that's where I grew up, and, and the church I grew up at was called Calvary Church. And Calvary Church began, um, and they essentially were like a port portable church, kind of like our Bay Life Riverview is. And so they would meet in Brandon High School, and then they would meet in Bloomingdale High School after that, and then eventually they bought a building, and it's now called the Crossing Church. Um, and so that's the church that I grew up at. And um, not only though did I grow up in that church, but my dad was actually the head elder of the church when we were there, um, which was good for him, but bad for me. Um, in a lot of cases, that, that for me meant that I always had to be at church. Like every Sunday, we didn't miss. I mean, we were there early. We were staying late. I mean, we, we were all about church because my dad was not only an elder, but he was a head elder, which I don't even know what that really means. I guess maybe he's a little, I don't know, he was a head elder. So, um, so we were there a lot. And so what I found myself doing a lot in church was essentially having a lot of time to waste, um, being bored a lot, trying, trying to figure out um, what to do with my time to, to not, like, make myself go crazy since I was at church so much. And so um, what I would do is just kind of hang out. I would, I would get into trouble a lot, do, do dumb things, but I, I essentially would be there as, as, like, the last person there because my parents, of course, would, you know, have to talk to everybody because they're the elders. And my, my mom, I, I love her soul, but she's the person that has to talk to everybody, and she just has that special gift. And so I, I remember many memories waiting on a Sunday afternoon like a one o'clock, church has been over for like a good hour. My mom's talking to people. She's sharing, you know, saying, hey, this is what's cool about our church. And so I'm watching that happen. Then I look over at my dad, who's the head elder, and he's like kissing babies and shaking hands, you know. He's like doing that kind of thing. And I'm like, dude, can we just go home? And I'm just, you know, that's kind of what my experience was. And then I look back to like my experience in kids ministry. Um, had a great kids ministry pastor. Um, her name is Miss Jeannie. I loved her to death. Um, but my fondest memories of kids' ministry had nothing to do with the scriptures, had nothing to do with the adults that were there in my life, but the thing that I remember most about kids' ministry was, like, the candy. Um, I, I think I remember one time the teacher saying, hey, if you want to get saved, you can get this piece of candy. And I was like, okay. And, you know, um, 
And so I think I got saved about 10 or 15 times because I wanted some candy. Um, no, she didn't say that, but, but I, I was all about the candy. And so um, those were my fondest memories, I'm sad to say, about kids' ministry was being excited to get candy. And then when I moved into middle school and high school ministry, um, and when I got to that age of my life, um, I essentially was done with church. I was like, all right, I've grown up in it, and I'm done with it now. I, I don't really want anything to do with God. I'm not even really sure I believe in God. And so I went through this time in my life in middle school and high school where my mom was like, you know, praying for me every day, and she would share the scriptures with me, and, and she would encourage me to go to like our youth group. And so I, I would kind of have to go every once in a while to check it out, and I would go to youth group, and then I would come home, and my mom would be like, hey, how was youth group? And I would be like, oh, it was awful. And I'd make up like this story, like, you know, th this weird kid was following me around, and he smelled, and he was like, he wouldn't leave me alone, mom. I, it's, there, there's some weird people there. I, I don't want to go back. And I did whatever I could to stay out of church and out of youth group. And in fact, when I was in middle school and high school, my friends knew that I went to church, and so sometimes they would say things like, hey, aren't you a Christian kid? Hey, don't you go to church? Hey, isn't your dad an elder, and I would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, but, or I'd be like, oh, no, you know, I, I, I go, but I'm not really like one of those Christians, and I, I was ashamed of the fact that I grew up in church. I was ashamed as the fact that I grew up believing in God, and so that was kind of my middle school and high school experience in the church, and then when I went to college, I went to what I call the best university in the world, Clemson University, yeah, right? Not UF, not FSU, Clemson. Um, we, we say at Clemson that it's God's country. Um, I'm sure you say that at your school too, but I, that's where I went to school at. And um, it was at Clemson University, though, where I believe that God ordained for me to go there because it was my experience there my freshman year when I ran into a guy named Alan Tipping. And Alan Tipping was a sophomore. And, and I met Alan because he was a part of an organization called FCA. And what FCA did every year for the freshmen is they actually went out, met the new freshmen, and helped them move into their dorms. And so I'm moving into my dorm my freshman year. We, we called them, them the tin cans because they were actually made out of tin, and you could hear everything through the walls. It was insane. And Alan comes up to me, and he meets me and says, hey, what's your name? And he strikes up this conversation with me. He begins to ask me questions about myself and about my life. And eventually the conversation turns to church, and Alan says, hey, what do you think about God? Hey, do you go to church when you were back at home? And so I'm like, well, actually, that's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, I did go to church my whole life. And so Alan's like, hey, cool, come check out this small group that we have in FCA. I think you'll really like it. I think you'll enjoy it. I think it'll help you get plugged in, and I think it's going to be great for your faith. And so I don't know anybody at Clemson. It's a big school, and so I'm like, okay, I'm game. I'm going to go meet some people. I'm going to go check this out and see if this is really a good environment for me. And so I show up at Alan's small group, and essentially for the rest of the year, I begin to see who God was for the first time through the life of Alan Tipping. Um, God used Alan to, to teach me the scriptures like I've never been taught before. God used Alan to challenge me in my faith and what I believed about God. God used Alan to challenge me to get outside of my selfish mindset and to go and to serve middle school kids on a Wednesday night at a school where they had an FCA there. And so Alan was this guy that I look back at my experience and I'm like, man, God put Alan in my life for a specific purpose and a specific reason. And it was at that time in college where I really began to walk with the Lord.